We are looking here in this video at this concept of the ionizable hydrogen, which you can say the acidic hydrogen. I am Mr. Ish and welcome to this video. What exactly is the ionizable hydrogen? Well, you are thinking about a bronsted acid, a compound which is a bronsted acid which acts as a proton donor. If you have a most simple compound which is this HA, this right here is your ionizable hydrogen because you're going to end up seeing something like this. The hydrogen becomes a proton, then you have the conjugate base generating. Here is a ionizable or your acidic hydrogen, but our video here is focusing on predicting which of the hydrogens in a compound can be your ionizable or your acidic hydrogen. We can look at a very good example using this specific compound and some of you or many of you will know the formic acid. That's what it is. You have two hydrogens. Here's your one hydrogen, here's your other hydrogen. How can you predict which of these is your ionizable hydrogen? If you're leaning towards this as your choice, then you would be right. But hypothetically, if supposedly we thought this to be our ionizable hydrogen, what would be the outcome? Think about it. When that hydrogen right here attached to the carbon goes away, you'll have something which would look like this. And you know you're having the conjugate base plus that proton which is being generated. However, if you look at this hydrogen which is being ionized, your end result is quite different. You have something which looks like this and then H plus right over here. You do obviously see your conjugate base over here. Here you see your proton. Here's your conjugate base. Here's your proton. Well, it happens to do very much with the prediction of what your ionizable hydrogen is. This right here is your ionizable hydrogen and you would predict this to be the case because when you're looking at this end result of the conjugate base which generates, this is more stable than this. Why is this more stable? This particular compound, why is it more stable? Because here, the negative charge which you see, the negative charge which you are seeing over here, it's on the more electronegative atom. And that right there is a single best indicator for you to utilize in predicting ionizable hydrogens. The ionizable hydrogen is attached to the atom which is more electronegative. Here, if you're looking at this as your end result, it's wrong because carbon is more electropositive. If you're looking at this as your end result, you're right because oxygen is a more electronegative atom. The hydrogen attached to the more electronegative atom will be your ionizable, your acidic hydrogen. The hydrogen attached to any of the other atoms will not be acidic. And why is that particularly the case? Because when you're looking at this compound, and let's look at it in, in this way right here, you have an electronegative atom and it's directing the dipole towards the electronegative atom which is making the hydrogen electropositive and the oxygen is becoming electronegative. Because this is more positive, it is automatically more ionized and is ready to be given off. So keep in mind, the prediction of your ionizable hydrogen depends on that hydrogen in your Bronsted acid or water compound being attached to the more electronegative atom. Let's end this video by looking at these three quick examples. Look right over here. We're not going to worry about naming these compounds, but look, you have these hydrogens here in this compound, as you can see, but which of these is going to be your ionizable hydrogen? Well, look at the hydrogen which is attached to the atom that's more electronegative. Here, these three hydrogens are attached to carbon. This hydrogen here is attached to an oxygen. So this right here is your ionizable or your acidic hydrogen. Look at this compound right over here. You have these hydrogens which are attached to carbon, these hydrogens attached to carbon, here's a hydrogen attached to a sulfur. So this right here is going to be your more ionizable hydrogen. This will be your next more ionizable hydrogen because it's closer to sulfur. These will be your least ionizable hydrogens because they're furthest away from that sulfur. Now look at this particular compound. You have carbon, carbon, carbon. You have a fluorine, you have a hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. These right over here are the least ionizable hydrogens because they're located very far away from your very electronegative atom. The hydrogens which are located closest to this will be your ionizable hydrogens, even though in reality they may not ionize, but in theory, these are your most ionizable hydrogens from this compound. These would be the next more ionizable. And then these three right here are the least ionizable because they're the furthest away from that fluorine. So everything depends on the location of a hydrogen and its proximity to an electronegative atom. Here's your electronegative atom. The hydrogens closest to that are generally more ionizable in theory. But these are the types of hydrogens which are more likely to be given off. These type of hydrogens will not likely be given off because they are still attached to carbon. But in terms of ionization, they're a little more ionizable. But that's what you want to remember. The more electronegative the atom which is holding the hydrogen, the more likely that hydrogen is ionizable or acidic. And that brings us to the end of this video. Have a good day. Bye.